day three. Up until now, when I've given you integration, I always told you to look for substitution, just plain substitution first. And as we look at this one, there's really no shot of that. Because uh, really, whenever you saw just one e to the x in the problem or e to anything, you wanted to get it to e to the u, and there's just no way of making that happen for substitution. Which leaves us with our last resort, which is integration by parts. But on all the ones we've had so far, at least something that you would choose would go away eventually. For maybe you had an x squared, and you'd put that for derivative, and eventually it would go away. Or you had a natural log, you'd put that in u, and it kind of went away, became 1 over x, and... Well, here we have e to the x, which either it's derivative or antiderivative is e to the x, and that's never going to go away. Same thing with cosine. When you have trig, all it does is it switches back and forth from sine to cosine. Sine to cosine is no matter which way you go. So neither one of these is going to go away, which makes this one a little bit more difficult. Uh, I'll make you do pretty much just one of these by hand, and then on Monday, I'll show you a way to do this particular type that's a lot easier to organize. But for today, I want to see if you can do it. Right. So basically, we have two choices. You can write them both down if you want. Uh, it's up to you. But I'm going to write down, basically, there's choice one. We'll do that in red. And over here is choice two. And then I'm going to see which way you believe might be the easiest. Uh, either way would work, I'll be honest with you. And we'll see which one you think you might want to do. Well, either I can make u, and maybe I should actually do it in red, like I said I was going to. I can make u cosine of 2x. Agreed? Then dv would have to be e to the x dx, right? That is one way I could do it. That's one way I could divide things up. The other way would be to make u e to the x and make dv cosine of 2x dx. And what we have to do is decide which of those two ways, the red or the blue, is going to be easier. Because they will both get me to the answer. Because neither one of these functions is going away. You would still have to do the problem the same way no matter which way you started. Well, maybe we want to see, well, what is du? How would I get du? And how would I get v for each of them? And that might help me decide which way I want to go. To do the derivative here in red, to get du, well, what would you have to do? Yeah, it's kind of trig chain rule, right? What's the derivative of cosine is? Close. Negative sine. And then remember, you would write down the angle. And then what's the last step for trig? You write down the derivative of the angle. Is it okay if I could try and sneak the two in there? Like right there? Ooh, just left enough room. Well, that wasn't too bad, right? That's, that's, that's all right, right? And then, of course, dx on that one. And then we have to find v. Well, to take the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. Well, that was not horrible. Okay. But once again, you notice this last portion that's going to be in the integration symbol. Did either one of the functions get any better? Did any of them get any closer to going away? No. Well, maybe it'll happen over here. Let's try the blue. I'm thinking so far red's not that bad. Let's try blue. du is well, e to the x. Yeah, well, that's real nice. That's pretty simple. v, unfortunately, we're going to have to go up here to do that. It'd be integrating cosine of 2x dx. That angle causes a slight issue. We have to do that portion with substitution. And do you agree that we're going to have to keep doing substitution every time we do it if dv is cosine of 2x? So I'm thinking at that point, somebody just said, let's just forget about that one then, if that's how it's going to be. Because isn't this chain rule a lot easier over here in the red than doing that in the blue? You could do it. And if, for those of you who are still looking at it, you'd have to do u is 2x, du is 2dx, get the 2 out of there. And you'd have to do that every single time that you went through dv. Because you're going to have to do it several times. And so I agree with you. Let's just say, forget about it. And maybe make a note to yourself why you said forget about that option. That might help you, especially for those of you that plan on taking these notes with you when you go on to school. Maybe write why you chose not to do it that way versus this way. Okay. I'll give you a second to do that. 
I agree with you. I would definitely stick with the red one on this one. It's an excellent choice. Everybody ready? Well, then what you have to do is finish your integration by parts, which basically says take this one times that one. So it's e to the x times cosine of 2x. That's basically the part that's already gotten out, that's been integrated, it's done. And again, that's a lot of times kind of the portion I'll kind of make a note to myself, that part's done, put a box around it so you don't lose it in your work. Then what should I write next? To the right of my box here, a y a minus. That's what the formula says. Yeah, it says minus the integral, yep. Minus the integral of basically these two. Now let's face it, we know this is going to go on for a while because I told you it's going to. And so you have to make a choice of what you want to take out and what you don't. Remember that one problem the other day? You took stuff out and then you had to distribute it through like three or four different spots. And so that's where you might want to say, hey, this two that's right there, I might just leave it inside. But this negative, what did I tell you about negatives? Whenever you have the chance, take them out. So basically I'm going to take this negative and put it right there, which really makes it a, a plus. Everybody good with that? So that's a plus, and inside I basically have 2 e to the x sine of 2x dx. Does everybody understand where we're at at this point? But then unfortunately you're looking at it and saying, how's that any better than what we started with? And in fact it's not, it's worse, because there's a 2. But now some of you might be thinking, well, can we do substitution then? Well, we got the 2x there, we got the 2, but then we still have the e of the x in there. Good thinking, though, if that's what you were trying to do. Unfortunately, we have to do by parts again. Now, don't switch what you made u and dv and stuff like that. Up here, I made u trig, so let's make the u the trig again. Okay? And that 2 right here, you can pretty much put that wherever you want. That's up to you. Um, just make up your mind, I guess, uh, wherever you want to put the 2. Do you want to put it with the sine of 2x? Is that where you want to put it? Okay. So 2 sine of 2x, and then dv must be everything else, which is e to the x dx. Remember, I'm only going to make you suffer through a couple of these, and then I'll show you a little organizational technique on Monday. Uh, I guess you could consider it a shortcut, yeah. It just basically uh, keeps everything in line for you. And then you don't have to worry about distributing everything and all that. It takes care of it for you. Well, I would like you to try and figure out du and v right now for this portion. I think v is pretty straightforward. Go ahead and try du. Let's see what you get. In fact, I'll just fill that in. I don't think any of you are going to mess up on that one. All right, so there's already a 2 there. And so what's the derivative of sine? Because the 2 is just like a constant, this one that's sitting out front. And so the derivative of sine is cosine. Notice how I gave myself some room, though. Then you write down the angle, and then times the derivative of the angle, which is, again, 2. But there was already a 2, so it's a 4. Right? Because there's already a 2. A 2 from the derivative, of course, there's a dx here. Now, this up here, I can, in, by colors, kind of organize things. So I'll go back to the black and write the part that comes out. So it is plus. So that right there. So it's 2 e to the x sine of 2x. Minus. I will, yep, put a box around it, yep, because that one's done. That got out. Do you understand the box thing, why I do that, just so I, so I don't forget where this stuff is? Everybody ready? 
So now this goes in there. So minus, again, you have to decide. You know, this could go on forever. So what do you want to do with the 4? Leave it in or take it out? Yeah, I would leave it in. It just saves you from having to distribute. Okay? You would have gotten the same 4 anyway. So it's 4 e to the x. Believe it or not, we are actually fairly close to being done with this one. Even though you're like, that's worse than what I started with. Okay, I agree, it is. We're going to take a break because I have to save.